Yep, yep, okay, yep. Yep. It's thinner than most every most everything else you put on, so you might put on a couple applications if you were gonna brush it very hard. But um, I'm just gonna lock this down quick, and it takes very little um, to go on. You can see there's not a whole bunch of sheen to it, just a little, but it's it's very, very, it's a little bit tacky now, but almost dry, it's almost completely dry already. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So I've used matte for the longest time, now you guys have this fixative. What's yep. the difference between the two? Um, the matte finish builds up a little bit faster. It's more of a top coat. Um, this is more designed just to adhere, um, adhere powders between levels. It's not going to build up like a gloss or a matte. It won't build up um, like the others will. Um, the one thing that I found with matte finish is, and I don't know if it was specific to the can that we had, or if it was the, um, or if it's matte in general, but I did find it to um, occasionally turn white. Um, if my, I thought it was moisture, um, didn't seem to be a moisture issue. I'm not exactly sure why that was happening to me, but I, we had some white on a fish. We had some white on some antlers that we had done. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure where that came from, but. I'm almost wondering if it's something in the aerosol. That's, and, and the can that we were working out of was a little bit old. Um, I hadn't seen it before. I don't, it's usually moisture, so it may have gathered moisture just from being hot and cold and so forth, but um, once that happens a time or two, you get instantly gun shy from it. So um, I'm gonna quick go to another color, and what I see, what I see here are some real specific, um, I shouldn't say specific, really random vermiculations and color pigment changes throughout the head on this fish that aren't necessarily the big dark markings of a perch that we all know the big black stripes on the side. And I hate saying black, but the big dark stripes on the side. Um, a walleye, lots of specific vermiculation like these patterns here that kind of come through their, their tight within the scale, they exist um, not necessarily covering an entire scale. And that's, that's a tough pattern to create, especially with an airbrush, because it gets almost too soft. And um, I would, you know, we've all done the, the kind of rub and buff steel wool method with, with starting to build your base. And I, I'm not saying that this would replace that, but it certainly complements it. These pastels are, um, I'm gonna say oddly named, and I get why they're named what they are for color choices, but this is yellow ochre, extra dark. I don't, I, I get it, it's in there, but I see green before I see yellow, mm -hmm. but that's green. what they call it. So, and I really like this color, and you can see here on your perch, there's a whole bunch of this a color that's similar to that kind of throughout here, um, but this builds a really nice um, undertone. So if you were looking to build kind of a random undertone here um, along this maxillary bone, he's got some here, um, he's got some low down through here. Um, now where you touch it on the scales, it's gonna stick. You can also see the powder that kind of jumps off of the jumps off the applicator, and that kind of blows off of it. Um, but this gives a really nice base, gives you a nice medium to start building some of those base tones, like so. But you can see here, along the smooth surface of the maxillary bone, if I rub this back and forth, I can kind of blend it out and make it very, very nice and smooth, just like you would your airbrush. Um, lots of, lots that of. That was a skin. Mm-hmm, yes, yep. What do you do to that surface? Because I've found where, like on that upper maxillary and stuff yep. like that, it doesn't always want to stick. It's like it needs something to, to bind. bind to, yes. Um, and that will happen, um, Sometimes when you build up glosses, as you're, as you're painting your first coat that after the gloss, um, there can be some adhesion prop problems. 
this workable fixative, just a, a light dust of that will give it something to bite to. Um, it works pretty well. So we can come in here, we can give it some of these kind of cool markings. Sure, yep, yep, yep. And I really like to um, seal my my fish, my skin mounts, before I before I go to painting, and my thinking is I'm gonna create, that sealer is gonna span across the epoxy onto the skin and hopefully give me a more uniform surface so I don't have those adhesion or differences. Maybe not problems, but adhesion differences. Speaking of that, um, Brett, did yeah. Tom ever get that figured out with his old sealer? The, no, the, pre, the old premium fish yeah. sealer? No, and we need to. Oh, um, that's good stuff. I missed that. Um, I do too. We talk about that quite regularly. I've got about this much left on a jog. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, my own personal yep, stuff. But. Yep. I know. I've got a lot of those little stashes of this and that here and there that I'm not going to share. And I keep adding a little lacquer to it. Yeah. To it <laughs> gets a little thinner and a little thinner. Yep. Um, so I've just. I've been working out of this yellow ochre extra dark. Um, another one that, that works pretty well is, uh, this is raw umber, and I think that's a little truer, truer to its name, but um, you've got several different varieties of dark here that we can work with. Um, to just start building some of this, and go through like so. Um, since a few of you are, or a few more of you are starting to work with this, I'm gonna jump around um, and I'm gonna give you kind of some ideas for a fin. I think this stuff works really good. You guys are in serious walleye country and to me that is like the scariest place for reproduction guys to go. Those walleyes are, oof, man. A lot of work and in smaller sizes no they don't and we've it's talked about, about that supplies. unless they hit the ground in which case <laughs> yeah it's a disaster yeah, yeah. It it's a mess and um and then you're kind of making a phone call for another one um but yeah it is a, a multi-year supply there um i've got some walleye pictures here that kind of show some of these really cool effects that we get to struggle with, all of us together. Um, I don't really have a pectora pelvic fin, but that's a good one. Here's a here's an nano fin. Um, the dreaded tail. The dorsal. This is a good dorsal. I like this one. I've got a good dorsal to paint. Is that that we have? Yes. Okay. You recognize these? Yeah. You should. Um, but if you look at the detail here, um, especially in the dorsal, that's, that is tough. That's a really tough area to reproduce. And in the effort to build this base, I like to get all of these markings built um, ahead of time so I'm gonna put down a few different colors first so as we look at the dorsal I see obviously the the dark markings but first I see kind of a transparency here I've painted out the transparency so I I'm opaque I'm gonna try and build that first and see if I can get you something and I did not get here with the one color that I prefer to do this with. There's a there's a pale blue um, that comes in the turkey kit that's pretty handy. So work with me here for a minute. I'm gonna this is an experiment. I'm gonna see if I can pick up some blue blue and I may go to I think this is actually yeah this is raw umber tint white I think but I'm gonna pull just a little bit 
of this blue in here between a few of the spines. And you could go blue, you can interpret this as, are you going off the background color? I think we're picking up a lot of color out of the rocks there that's giving us that um, purpley pink hue, but um, I'm gonna get a little bit of this down. And then I would do one of two things. I'd either go to my airbrush and airbrush white over it, or since this is all an experiment anyways, I'm gonna see if I can tone this down. I like that this is a little bit gray. Just keep softening it. <coughs> I do, I do, it is it's titanium white, it must be this one. Yeah, colorless blender. Um, that's a really cool color too, and that might be the next thing that, we, that I'll try and put on here and see what that does for me. But that is softening up that blue quite a bit. Um, let's go to some of the colorless blender and see if I can pick up a little bit of that on there too. Yeah, that's continuing to soften that, that blue tone. Might even go to the white on top of that and just see if I can get something. Otherwise, we can real quick grab the airbrush and see where that pale blue really shined in those. Yeah, yep. Um, and there's a, there's a great Payne's Gray. Um, which is a really, really nice color for doing stuff like this. I enjoy it. I like that color a lot. So something like that to get ourselves to a base. I'm just going to hit this quick. Um, I do see a pale yellow in those spines. And I'd like to see us try to, to pick up some of that color. Um, and this is pretty easy to apply to the spines, um, easier to control. The nice thing is you don't have a whole bunch of overspray with it. So I've got just a soft blue there. I think I'm actually going to come in and lighten that up just a little bit, just so we're not fighting it. This is a color that I mix up, um, and it varies a little bit from batch to batch, but basically this is just kind of my blending yellow. I don't like to blend epoxies with stark white, um, just something that I try to avoid. Um, there, there's a place and a time for white white, but early on I like to be able to blend with with a little softer, something that's an off, more of an off white. Yeah. It'll last forever. <clears throat> yeah. 
I'm also going to bring some down here of this kind of blending base down over a little bit of that flesh and some of those that we started with earlier just to show how we can kind of build some depth of color down here. This is white. I've got a little yellow ochre in it. Um, and oh, I think there's a drop of, of um, black green in it. Anybody having any success? Is this stuff working for you? Doing anything that you like or don't like? Any questions about it? This is a bomb. Um, it's kind of neat. It's, uh, it's like kind of a neat material. Now, take this to your game head work or imagine like inside of your deer ears. Um, any success with that? Um, no, this, ears is first, and... I just, this is new to me. I just okay, gotcha. It, so. Yep. Uh, um, you tell me on uh, Saturday night. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> okay, like well, no. We'll find out. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's that's really got potential. Um, these these colors that aren't black, like like this. Um, that one's probably the raw umber, maybe. Or have I got? I bet I've got raw umber. Yeah, I've got raw umber. It's on the bottom. Don't dump it. <laughs> yeah, and then it's a one day supply. Yeah. Just to get the yeah, there you go. get it now to bite. Raw umber shade. Shade. Okay, so that's yep. a little darker version of the raw umber. But um, they go on a little bit darker, like this yellow ochre, extra dark, the raw umber. They go on a little bit darker than they appear. Um, so don't be afraid of some of these that look a little green or look a little brown um, as you're building that. I'm going to go here with this. Um, with this uh, yellow ochre and I'm gonna come along the spine and I'm just gonna bring some of that little bit of random marking to the spines that's black that's true black yep yep and I use it pretty sparingly, but um, some of these walleye fin markings can you can go on with black, um, play with some of those. And... So now that I've got to start with those, I'm going to come in with the smaller applicator and some of the black, and I'm going to attempt to get some of these dorsal markings. that are so tough to do. <coughs> that's, that little bit bugs you, you must need to get back into it a little harder. What's that? That little bit that's bugging you, you must no, need to No, I just got it. So this works pretty well um, to actually shade with or make real specific little marks. You know, if I want to get kind of some random markings here. It would work real good if you had a thin repair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's something that um, I just did a batch, just have been painting a batch of copies this past week and works great. I had one that just looked like it sat in a keeper. I had less fin than it did. Um, we back them with uh, silk span. Had more silk span on the backside and got those to blend out really nice. Um, so pay attention to kind of the shapes. I didn't do a great job here um, with my application, but 
you can see where it goes fairly quick. Yes, you'll probably spend more time painting details because you have the ability to now, um, but this stuff is a pretty quick medium to put on. The more we learn, the longer this stuff takes. Yeah, you can put a lot of time into it. Yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you $1. can. $1. Yeah. <laughs> on a good day. Yeah. <laughs> if you charge them. Exactly. Um, but that would be some options that we could do. Um, trying to bring back some of those markings in a reproduction. So, sorry, I'm not really turning it around. No, it's just fine. Okay. Get everybody in view. Over your shoulder. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that's another application in the fins. Um, Larry's got a great start on the walleye pattern on the side of the fish there with with that, and I'm going to do just a little bit to kind of show you again some more building of this base, um, kind of sticking to that theme. Uh, we're going to get some pattern going here and look to look to these patterns on the in your reference and you'll find that rarely will the pattern extend across an entire scale um, it's the lower portion or an upper portion or maybe it follows the scale pocket or um, but rarely are they large applications we can build anything we want to here with her pattern Um, oh, just thinking real quick. Anybody struggle the same that I've d struggled with the white tip tail on a walleye? Um, that always looks airbrushed or often yeah. looks airbrushed. Um, the white and then the dark, bring your dark markings down over top of it. It, you can almost eliminate that issue immediately um, with just bringing down a few of these hard markings. I'll do it on this just to show you it's, it works really well. Um, pick up a little bit of this yellow. Typically the lower lobe has some yellow in it. Be careful, I just, did, I just picked up more blue than I did yellow. I'm gonna bring some of this yellow color here. some of these markings. the white on and then go back over with the powder, yellow powder and then the black. I would, yeah, um, exactly. And then I would bring, I would bring down some of these little detail marks over your, over your yellow and, and white. And now you don't have that airbrushed line. Um, this breaks that line up pretty easily, pretty quickly. These tend to run in little chains. Good stuff. Maybe. Throw it to wipe when she gets her nails done. You can really Not get acetone it. as it works. <laughs> um, so that would give you just I a quick idea. Of, okay, you can't use that one option there for getting the, the white back on the wall. I tell you that looks good.
And um, I can paint fish and it don't bother me. The wife gets in that piece of car after her nails are done. And, so now, Brett, what would we yeah. get to get that, that reflective quality on that gold? Mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, just the shiny surface a little bit, we can get a little bit out this, yep. this yellow, but what would we so, do to, do they make a, a red one? They make no? these in a metallic base, and mm -hmm. I don't think they're vibrant enough. There's not mm -hmm. as enough that jumps off of them. I like the Perlex powders. Um, I've been a big fan of those for quite a while. If if you really wanted this, and and I know exactly what you're talking about, that really strong reflective base, I would challenge you to start very dark, almost black. I want to paint a perch. My, my goal is to start with a black fish and then build to my perch color and the reason is these reflective colors come off of black like a mirror a mirror is black their most color comes off of black most reflective so you've got to have that base behind it to get to that true reflective base if you if you want everything out of your reflection um, these work pretty well this is Pearl X. Um, this is an old duo blue green that doesn't exist anymore. Don't ask me where you can get it. They don't make it, but I like it. Um, and off of, so how many I actually have? do. I do. I have like six big <laughs> jars and they're under lock and key. Um, but uh, you can see this. This is um, the duo blue green. I'm, I'm sorry, green yellow, green gold. And you can see it's somewhat reflective, but oh, not yeah. really reflective. Now, let's. Uh, I don't have a gloss to lock that down, but I will. I will lock it down with the fixative. Now, whoa. oh, that's got a total sheen to it. Now let's go. Let's do something crazy. Working this up. Um, is there a little cup with uh, Q tips? Yeah. Yeah. Um, little trick when you're painting, it works pretty good. Um, floor dry or cat litter um, to get rid of your excess paint. So we don't have a cup of something that's going to spill. This is lacquer. This is lacquer. <laughs> I am not a water-based guy as much as I would like to. Um, I'm just not. It, I've, I've bought an entire set of water-based paints two or three times in the last 20 years and gave up on them before I ever learned how to use them. <laughs> hey, that's bonus. You haven't been in the fish shop long enough then if that gets you high. All right. So here's our dark base. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go to an applicator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of paint it like a wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, it's, I've never found anything yeah. that really gets with this. That's about the most I've seen. All right, so the same, the same color on top of black versus on top of white. The dark one. The darkest one is the black. Okay. This other one is. So here's kind of what I'm thinking, Larry. If you really wanted to get that that strong, strong <coughs> reflection wow. underneath, I'd put it on black. You can really get you get more you get more out of it then. And I don't have I don't have a gloss with me. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this on solid. Just to show the difference. Do you ever mix your Pyramix powders with like wet look gloss? Sure. Yep. And tip with that. Yep. Yep. I've done that. I like that. Um, uh, Pearl X makes a varnish too, um, and that's a that's a heavier medium, but it works pretty well. I'm just if you were doing like a heavy. silver reproduction fish, you know your yep. white bass, yep, sheephead, something like that. Yep. Would you black mm -hmm. them out first? Um, black, or I would look to like Payne's gray um, if you want to pick some some other colors. You know another color that I really like? Um, I Again, I'm black's not my favorite color when it comes to to fish. I, it's so strong. Um, I like that Yax nose gray. Yeah. Um, it's just got a little bit of a pinkish purple hue to it. It's not solid black, but out of the can it's kind of nice to use. Um, so now I'm going to hit this. And that really knocked down my powder a lot. And the trick with powders, if anybody it has spent much time with them, the idea is that the particle stands, and that's when you get the most reflection out of it. So ideally, I would lock this down with a gloss, a gloss that the pow that could suspend the powder rather than knock it down. Spray it from a long distance away. I like to turn. I'll if I'm doing a lot of it. I will have a dedicated H airbrush, just a Pache H and a three ounce color bottle. And I'll put um, top coat gloss in the three ounce bottle. And then I can turn my air pressure way down. It atomizes really nice and soft and you don't get this aerosol hard hitting. Um, yeah, where it just kills, it, makes it all Yeah, it knocks everything kills. down. You can, you can build your glosses nice and soft in between layers if you put it in that in in an age it, it works pretty well and then i i just leave it dedicated the one thing you'll find is that um it dries in the nozzle pretty fast so another if i'm really thinking about it i'll have the top coat gloss and uh, an h bottle of lacquer thinner and then pull it off spray it spray the thinner through it and then um and then go on about Coming back, I'm going to put on another application of this just to build it up a little bit and then we'll come in and we'll put some detail in that. So really getting some... Look how much difference there is from the cheek and the, yep. the yeah. side. Just, just from having the black underneath it. I mean this is a duo color so this is kind of a pain. Um, it's going to come off green from one direction, and then really gold, uh, from, the gold from the other. I like interference gold. Um, it's it's a very, it's a strong gold, but it's not, it does have some, it doesn't hit you from every angle, I guess would be the easiest way to say it. It'll come off real gold, but That works pretty well too. Um, I'm gonna hit that with the fixative. Ideally, again, gloss, but knock it down. And then you could come back with some of your your other base tones on on top of that, up in the up in the scale pockets. Again, our goal here was to create a reflective base. Um, we could come in with some of these. Oops. in here might take something a little stronger to get that sh that hard 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 reflection now i think used sparingly in some of those brighter places in the face this could come off as a really good it's a really good base for you um also you might want to tone it down um, you might want to go over it lightly with with um, some pigment. Um, we, we do have some of the individuals, and I think they're 
six, seven bucks a piece. I don't have any with me. Um, but uh, uh, Mandy will do a show special if you call, him on Mon call her on Monday. Um, and then you can buy a lot of these individually too if you, if you source them too. Um, there's, I think there are 80 some colors. This is the fish base kit. The colors are on the back if you wanna see which ones they are. Um, and she's got the, so normally that is $69.95 and for the show special she put them at 52. So I think that was like 25% off of them. Um, how about questions? Anybody got any questions that before I get? <clears throat> if you add a skin mount, yep, perch or whatever, sure, it already has that dark, so you just seal it and then take off with the stuff. Huh? I would. Um, I, I would build a nice soft base. Um, well, um, I build a really nice soft base of flesh tones. I get just as we started here. Um, a perch can go, can dry really dark or really light. Um, and with a perch, you have those vertical bar markings that will dry into the skin. Very rare on most of our, most of the rest of our fish. But, um, I like to take, and it's, it's kind of, it sounds a little bit quick and dirty, but, um, I'll take this yox nose gray, I'll thin it down, um, probably 50% or more um, with with thinner. And then I'll come in with a liner brush. Now this is specific for the skin. Um, and I'll actually paint in, um, I'll paint those bars by hand. And I'm only gonna accent the vertical bar markings that are already there, but I'll do a little bit with this one, but it's it doesn't work nearly as well on a reproduction. Um, I've tried to do that with various medium, but it always gets too dark. And it's probably it, because it's not thin enough. And I would say at least, oh, I've probably got two to three parts of thinner to one part of paint. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna add a little retarder too. Um, and if this is thin enough, um, it will soak into the, into your sealer and almost bleed into the scale pocket. Um, it shouldn't go on heavily at all, but all I'm going to do is kind of enhance those markings. And again, it's not something designed at all for doing on a reproduction, but I'll do it just to kind of give you an idea of how much I'm going to let it puddle just a little bit and it will bleed. It will soak into the skin. Um, and all you do is accentuate those existing markings. Right. Um, and, it, and that's all part of building that base. Just like we did a little bit here, um, we're gonna build that base on the, by first these undertones, and then we're gonna go with the specific markings. That would be the next step that I would do. you still have your skin sealed prior to or you're yes. waiting to seal it? Yep, no, I seal it first. And it because it's a lacquer-based sealer, the lacquer in this, it'll kind of penetrate into that sealer. Yeah, because I've tried the fan pastels and it's just... It's like, wow, this is... Too hard. Yeah. Yeah, yep. But really, really thin. Like, if you can see it in the first application, it might be a little bit too much. You can see how thin that paint was to go on there. On top of white, that's that's actually very, very thin paint. Um, so, this. Um, these pan pastels, I think, for me, they work exceptionally well, and I think they're kind of limitless in opportunity. I've worked with them for, I don't know, we've probably had them six, seven months. Um, I've also worked with, with um, before the pan pastels, I spent 
a little bit of time trying to source something similar and it might have been in the makeup aisle at Walmart at 11 o'clock at night. Um, I won't admit, I won't say whether that's actually true or not. Well, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, Holly's, uh, Holly's makeup containers mysteriously went down and, um, no, it's, the problem with makeup is it typically goes on more as a powder. Um, and I talked to a private label makeup company about actually designing some, a makeup that was for taxidermy work. Um, there were some binders, some issues with talc, and some different things that we sorted through. But to get a 10 well um, tray of custom colors that I had picked in the formula that, that I really liked was going to cost me about 78 bucks a tray. That's what it was going to cost me if I wanted to resell it. It's ridiculous. None of us would pay that. I, I looked at it and said, would I pay that? No, this is dumb. And then three, four months later, Mandy comes back with these pan pastels. I went, oh, there's a better idea. So now I don't have to spend any time in a makeup aisle at Walmart. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go over this. Do. Oh, <laughs> sh nobody knows about that. Um, but this works. These these work really well, and there are. <laughs> um, there are so many opportunities. Yeah, that's scary. Um, this is again just that kind of soft yellow color. <laughs> And if, when I do a reproduction, um, it kind of takes on the appearance of a skin mount before I ever start applying color. And that's just kind of my, my technique for doing it. Um, there's a thousand different ways to skin a cat, but I like to get that reproduction looking somewhat like a, a dead skin. Um, and I like to do it with uh, this kind of off-white tone. If you look at your, if you look at your perch or your reference, whatever you happen to have, I see a lot of warm color underneath, um, kind of an orange base. And um, I've had pretty good luck again returning back to the pan pastel um, to get some of that warmer color underneath. Remember, we're going to build color on top of these. But uh, that, that seems to work pretty well. And this is even more orange. Any of you guys that are doing perch or walleyes, um, if you have any in the other room, a really important thing that I would look to is this pattern on the top of the head. Um, notice there is a real specific pattern. Um, very sharp, dark markings. Um, you'll find it in reference if you've got one. Top of the head, I've got a great top of the head. Still hurt somewhere. Um, some on the wall I hear you can see um, it's not just one solid color um, perch have even more broken pattern that's another thing I would build early on. Um, same on a pike. So many fish, we overlook the top of the back, but notice the, notice the bar markings on the top of the back. They can be faint, they can be almost non-existent, but most of the time they are in there a little bit. Um, I don't, I did not get here. 
that picture. Um, but that's something that I would I would do again. And they're more specific little. There's a pattern to them, and this this would work well with the pan pastel. It also works well with the um, the thin down lacquer base paint on the top of the head. Um, you know, these, a seminar like this can go so many different directions and, you know, we're talking paint is only one aspect of what we do. It's still, I think your the bulk of your points are in your anatomy and your craftsmanship and so forth, but you can sure make, you can take a, a solid piece and make people walk across the room with your paint. You know, if you've got an anatomically accurate fish that's a little bit lacking, a little bit of luster, you're not seeing, you're just not super convinced that it's the best fish you've ever painted, look further into the details um, and, and how you've achieved some of this, like Larry pointed out, this real electric yellow how would you get to that? Start working with some of these other mediums and the options. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, real good pattern on the top of the head there. You can kind of see there's these variations of color, lights and darks. Um, same continues over the back, lights and darks here. Um, good stuff there. Um, so it helps to get that base built. Then to come back with, with some of these softer colors in between, and all of this done before we put on our big major, our, our big body colors with our airbrush. Can you use that stuff after you put a lot of your major colors in too? Yes, yep. And that's the neat thing is it works very well in conjunction with, with your airbrush paints. Because it seems like a lot of these colors too, um, a lot of these darks and whatnot almost look like they might be you know, added after some of these major, yeah, you know, some of these more solid definitely. colors. Um, definitely. Layers. Yep. Paint in, <clears throat> paint in layers. Um, layer on your applications of color and it works really well. So I've got kind of that, um, I put this color, this kind of blending color yeah, underneath. What, what is, what you said it's a yellow, it almost looks like it's... It's, it's probably a hundred parts of white to five parts of yellow, like a yellow ochre and maybe one part of dark brown. Okay. Um, and it's just gonna create kind of that soft, basically. I thought you had um, some gold in there or something too. No, no. So it's almost- And that's probably the yellow that it's picking so it's up. Green yeah. Yeah. So it's similar like to an ivory white or something. Yeah, probably closest to uh, bass, bass belly. Bass belly? Yeah, that bass belly white. Um, pretty similar to that. Okay. Um, but uh, I just kind of look at the skin, and and I would I would tell you interpreting your reference to me is probably the most important part. And looking at this picture, we can't paint this color. Okay, this this color is 15 different colors. It's layers of colors. It's layers of reflection. Um, but I would challenge you to look at the base. What is what is this base underneath? Build that first and start layer, layering on top, layering colors on top to get to here. If you paint this, this white reproduction or say it's a skin mount, if you paint it with this color yellow right out of the airbrush, it's not gonna act the same. You're gonna get a real lemon color. It's not gonna give you it's not going to give you this. This is the this is a series of of layers that creates this effect. I would I would say don't look at this as color. Look at this as an effect. Any other questions or ideas or thoughts or things to explore? Marky's on a crappie with yes. that um, watered down. 
It does. Work it enhances, um, like on a black crappie or a white crappie, to enhance on a skin, right? To enhance those colors, it works great. Yeah. It works okay. exceptionally well. Then I'll take after I do that. Then I'll take and turn way down. Turn the airbrush way down, and I'll go to um, this yak nose color and get in really close and just soften the edges of them. Works really, really well. I just did three, three, two whites and a black, and um, it it works really good. Clean some of this out of here. Um, there is, so I did bring a few things for the shop. Um, I brought pre-orders for anyone that's got them. Catch me. Um, catch me anytime during the show. I'll be here through until um, Sunday morning. Um, but I also brought, some of you may have seen this deer book. Mandy has been working on a deer reference book because this is the fifth seminar and we want to make sure to talk about our deer reference. Um, <laughs> but this is pretty exciting. We wouldn't have brought it otherwise. But she's been working on this book for quite some, these books for quite some time. Um, she's got, uh, there are several different photographers that have, that she's got permission to use photos from. But uh, there's an eye book and a nose book. Um, and I've got the first dozen copies kind of hot off the press and I'll, I'll show you the nose, just flip through and show you some of these pictures for reference. They are, they're exceptional. <laughs> hey, 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 now we need to like black this out, so. Um, no, there's some awesome pictures. This is one of my favorites. Um, exceptionally good photos. So you guys can pass this around. Um, there's the eye one. So I've got I've got a few copies of those. I do have a few of the pan pastel sets. Again, I think she marked them down 25% ish. Um, the fixative, we brought a little bit of those. We've got some applicators, um, the microfiber applicators, and um, the water brush. Um, if you guys haven't played with the water brush, I think we talked that thing to death for six months, but it's pretty cool. Um, and I do have, if you haven't used one, I think I brought one, if anybody wants to play with it. Which, which uh, paints do you use with that water brush? The so most? you can use any, almost any material with it. I like the liquid scales. Um, that's what that's what I like to use. We were uh, at Hobby <clears throat> Lobby and they have those new paints that go in. That go in the pens. Oh yeah, <coughs> yeah. There are. They do make. Um, the first thing we did when we got these, because we had no idea what they were, they were actually a misorder. We got them and we filled them up with paint and tried to make them run and it didn't work. Um, they, they're they designed to have water in this reservoir and then there's a valve and it just basically leaches water into the bristles and keeps the bristles of your brush wet. You're still gonna dip into your medium, but because it keeps your brush wet, you're gonna be able to, if you're tipping scales, you're going to be able to tip oh a dozen scales easily without having to go back to your reservoir for more paint um, and it doesn't dry out in your it doesn't dry out in the brush so these go on really easily really nicely that way um, rather than having to dip paint dip paint uh, maybe get two or three you'll get like I say a good dozen out of this um, and they work exceptionally well. This is just one that sat around because it's got water in it. The bristles stay a little bit moist and we're horrible at taking care of them, but it still works pretty well. Um, you dried up paint in it, come back a week later. I bet I haven't used this in a week, um, four or five days anyways, and it still paints pretty well. But when we started, we tried putting paint in here and it plugged up and it didn't paint very well. What Holly mentioned is they do make a brush that has paint in it. Um, I think it's probably a thinner paint, maybe more like an ink, um, 
kind of excited to play with those, but um, works on the same principle. Mm -hmm. But um, I will, in fact, if anybody wants to use the water brush, it's right there. Just clean this out. I'm gonna, I'll put down some color. So if you want to paint <coughs> on the back of this little perch body, we can. So the idea, hopefully what you're going away with today is um, some different methods for building color that may be a little bit non-traditional, but um, possibly more accurate for you that you can apply specific details to build your base, build your foundation with. Um, I'll paint a few of these and let you guys on a, with some dark. What color is it? Black green. Black green? Yep. Just the dark blue color. replica? Yeah. Where the blue has got the light pocket? Mm hmm. Way up front? Yeah. Up on the optical? What do you not do then? What right? do I not do? <laughs> or what do you do? I mean, you got a. Your, usually your replica is white. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you, you don't. I found out you don't black it out or gray it out or whatever. Right. Um, I would lighten that. I would, well, you said replica, so it's not a skin. Um, I would use the pan pastel in the light blue. We just did that with a, with students, and it worked exceptionally well. Exceptionally, exceptionally well. Um, it goes on easier. You can control it. Um, go back, come back over. I don't think I have a great bluegill printed photo, I have some in my phone, um, but you can come back over that with with this yellow ochre extra dark and you can build the marking back over the, the light blue, that baby blue application and really make that convincing. Um, the breast is another area, you know, on the bluegill. This is oftentimes in a male, real, real deep orange. Um, if you look at it, there are several different colors that make that orange. It'll it'll start with the orange base, whatever that lowest color is, but then you can come back with um, something like this on a micro applicator and kind of accent the inside portion of the scale so you have some variation to the color and tone. Um, super successful, that works really, really well. Um, with any of these experiments, you're gonna find your favorites and then you're gonna find things that you still struggle with. Um, I would say that's one that's worked well for us. Um, but don't let those discourage you. If pan pastels aren't the answer, maybe it's Perlex powders. If Perlex powder, powders aren't the answer, maybe it's um, water-based paint or lacquer-based paint. Thin it down, paint it on with a, with a hand brush, paint it with your airbrush. Um, don't forget these tools. Um, definitely not trying to discourage you from using your airbrush. It's just that there are are things we can do to create extremely realistic effects that we've we've done for so long solely with an airbrush um, that we it's just kind of fun to have some of these other options to work with. But you can you can get some great effects. In fact, I'll since I've got color in here, I'll show you. Um, I'm gonna thin this paint way down way, way down. This one you could tell us. No? Not good. anymore. Okay, good. Curtis. I got a question for you yeah. here. Um, <clears throat> dealing with light, specifically um, spots on the northern pike. Yeah. I just have a, I fight with my airbrush, I fight with my airbrush. Can you do something with these pan pastels or something where you can you do can. with my hand? Um, I'm going to show you something, Pike. This is a great question. Um, and here, totally taking a tangent, but um, it's a great question. Works well on walleye fins. Um, Tom does this. I've seen uh, Cole's done it in in seminars. I've done it a little bit, but it works exceptionally well. So this is your Pike. Okay. Um, reproduction. Or even, the, even the skin, though, just the Or even the skin, the yep. Um, I'll show you first the reproduction option here. Okay. Um, but we've got our dark on. 
the whole fish again works whoops I shouldn't have done that I could have dumped that into my other cup again this is not my technique um, I have used it and it works exceptionally well the first person that did it that I saw do it was Tom um, I'm not sure I'm sure he's he picked it up from somebody too but um, for a, for the spots in a walleye tail, um, those real fine markings, or the bean spots on a northern, I have clean, sorry, um, lacquer thinner. Mm -hmm. um, acetone works well. I'm gonna turn my pressure down just a little bit. And come in here, and now our perch is become gonna become a pike. course follow your reference but all I'm doing is using lacquer to kind of blow the paint out of the way now if you have like an off white underneath there do you seal that and then and then do that and then do this yeah yep you certainly could um, build whatever color you want underneath but come in here a lot of times if you look at those spots on a pike um, they're gonna have yellow within them yep so if you can get these off to a consistency that you like, 